there's just no debate here, guys. This is hands down the best use for an old iPod Classic. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. Now, in today's episode, yep, we're going to be diving into iPods again, which I'm super excited about because we're going to be taking a look at a third-party firmware for these devices, or for some of these devices that you see on screen right now, called Rockbox. Now that name probably rings a bell to anybody who used to use an iPod and was really into customizing and getting the most out of your device because you could do a lot of really cool stuff with Rockbox. It gives you some customization options, but more than that, it allows you to run games and applications that you normally cannot run on an iPod. Now I've known about Rockbox for many years now, but I've never had a reason to install it on an iPod. In fact, I don't even think I owned an iPod when I first heard about it, but all that changes to Today because that is what this entire video is about. Now, one of the really neat things about Rockbox, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, it does not in any way erase the existing firmware, the original Apple firmware that is on these iPods. It just uh, allows you to dual boot that original firmware with the Rockbox firmware or the Rockbox operating system. So I've got five iPods in front of me right here, but only one of them both works and is capable of running Rockbox. Obviously, the two shuffles can get out of here. The iPod Nano third gen which is what i have right here unfortunately is not compatible with rockbox you cannot install rockbox on an iPod Nano 3rd Gen, so that one is going to be set aside, which leaves us with this 4th Gen iPod and this 5th Gen iPod or the iPod Video, whatever term you want to use. And out of these, we're going to be going with the 5th Gen because the 4th Gen here, if you watched my iPod Plus HP video, which I did last year, which this is the iPod Plus HP, looks a little more familiar to you, right? You'll know that this one uh, has a dead hard drive, so unfortunately this one is, is in a non-working state currently, but it is a potential future video project but for now we're just going to set it off to the side so that we don't get distracted and try to start working on this in today's video but yeah the ipod nano or the ipod nano the ipod fifth gen or the ipod video is what we're going to be using today now one of the major things that you have to make sure you've done with your ipod is uh, format it to the fat 32 file system and that is done by configuring it within the windows version of itunes which uh, essentially means it's a windows formatted ipod if you have a mac formatted iPod, uh, that means that the file system is not FAT32 and Rockbox is incompatible with that. So you need to have a Windows formatted iPod. But before we get to all that, I want to give a huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and I'll be talking more about them later on. For now though, let's go ahead and switch over to my computer and proceed with the Rockbox installation process. All right, so we've got our iPod, we've got our 30 pin cable, and we have our computer. In this case, we're using a Windows machine, but they also have the installer available for Mac and Linux as well. And luckily, the installation process is very straightforward. Now, on the home page, you're gonna get a list of the current stable ports. You've got a list of unstable ports down here, and you can see Apple is at the very top because uh, most people typically, at least I would think, associate Rockbox with iPods, but this is not just a firmware for for iPods. You can use it with all sorts of uh, portable MP3 players. They've got a list of them down here. Even some that I haven't heard of, like Packard Bell. Did you know Packard Bell made an MP3 player? Apparently they did, or at least they had their, their name on one manufactured by, by uh, some other company. Rockbox has actually been around since 2002. And you may think of Rockbox as like a long forgotten, antiquated project, but that isn't the case at all. The latest version, 3.15, was released in November of 2019. So yeah, I found that really surprising. In fact, this page template for the web page that we're on right now was last modified on June 14th, 2021. So yeah, it's pretty awesome that they still maintain this and update it today. Uh, Rockbox itself is open source, which is even better. And if you want to get even more information about this specific version and what was added in it, you can click on the release notes link here and uh, it'll take you to a wiki page on the Rockbox wiki and you, it takes tells you everything, tells you all the new features, and you can see some of the stuff we're going to be getting into. Yeah, I'll be honest, we're not going to cover everything today, but there are a, a couple of really awesome things that I want to uh, touch on. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and download the installer. So we'll click on this link here. It will take you to a download page where you can choose the platform that you're currently running. We're going to download, obviously, the Windows version. Well, maybe we're not going to get into it right now because the iPod has a very low battery, so we're going to let it charge up a little bit and then we'll install Rockbox on it. <laughs> 
All right, so we've got the iPod charged up to an adequate charge level to where it can fully boot into the operating system. And on my computer here, we've got the Rockbox utility opened up. So the first thing you get is the change log, which obviously lets you know uh, what changes have been made in the latest version. So we're gonna click on OK. The next thing you'll get is this screen that just lets you know that because this is a new installation of the Rockbox utility, that it will open up the configuration dialog. So we'll say OK, and it'll bring up the configuration dialog. And this is where you get to choose your specific MP3 player. So it's found uh, the N drive here is what it's detected as the iPod. So you see there it is right there, that is correct. And if you click on auto detect down here, it will uh, try to figure out what mp3 player you have and you see it's found iPod video and yes the word the word iPod is not properly capitalized they've got the I capitalized and the word pod is all lowercase and I find this kind of hilarious that like they haven't made this change yet but I mean on the website at least most places like on the home screen here or on the home page rather it's properly spelled here but if you go to the manual and you open up the manual for say uh, a let's do the iPod Pod Nano second gen right here. It's miscapitalized or not properly capitalized in the manual. Just like a really minor thing. But anyways, I just found that kind of funny. So uh, yeah, if you can, if for whatever reason, it's not able to find your specific MP3 player model, you can just uh, go through the drop down menus and select it yourself. But we got iPod video here. We'll click on OK. And really all you have to do next is uh, click the install button. But there are a couple of modifications you can make. You can unselect certain components, which really if you're installing Rock Box, you're going to want to make sure you get the bootloader rockbox itself the fonts you could uninstall the or uncheck the game files if you want to but we're not going to do that because we definitely want to take a look at the games and you can get some themes as well so we'll check themes we'll click on customize here and uh, these are all of the themes that you have to to choose from there's a lot of them let's go with this one right here it's kind of giving me a bit of a windows vista vibe so yeah we'll we'll definitely go with that one so we'll hit select and uh yeah, you can choose the, the version. We're going to get the latest stable version. You've got some accessibility options, backup and uninstallation. This is if you want to remove uh, Rockbox and its bootloader from your MP3 player. You can do that right from here. But yeah, let's just click on install and uh, have it do everything for us. <laughs> And there we go, it's done. So we're gonna click on okay. So yeah, installing Rockbox is very straightforward. You know what else is very straightforward? Checking out today's video sponsor, Skillshare. I'm sure you're very familiar with them by now, but if not, they're an online learning community with thousands of classes on just about anything you can think of. Graphic design, there's classes for that. Web development, there's classes for that. Becoming a YouTuber, yeah, there's even a class for that. And it's taught by the one and only MKBHD. He'll give you all you need to know about growing a YouTube channel and the steps involved in making videos. The thing that sets Skillshare apart from other platforms is it's specifically designed to have a focus on learning. Classes are broken up into multiple lessons to give you a natural stopping point when you're finished for the day, and you don't have to worry about ads or sponsorships, because every class is completely ad-free. Plus, Skillshare is adding new classes to their collection all the time, and their premium membership gives you access to all of them. Today, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people to click the link down below a free one-month trial. So be sure to check it out, and huge thanks to Skillshare for supporting the channel. Now, let's get back to checking out Rockbox, shall we? And here we are with the Rockbox firmware fully installed on our iPod video. Yeah, like I said, we're just going to be going through this. I'll be showing you guys some of the neat things that you can do with Rockbox. And what better place to start out than uh, with the music player? After all, this is an iPod. So just like in the default iPod firmware, you're going to use the scroll wheel to navigate around the menus here. So you scroll to the right to go down, to the left to go up. And uh, this database right here with the music note next to it is your, well, music database. So if you press the select button on that, you'll get a uh, kind of file browser here. And so all you got to do is navigate through that file browser and pick the song that you like. And uh, yeah, we'll go back to the menu here. You can press menu in uh, most cases to get back to the main menu here. Now, similar to the music database, you have a file browser that allows you to, well, browse all the files system-wide. Now, this is really nice because you normally cannot do this from 
the iPods firmware. You can, if you uh, enable this within iTunes, you can do it from your computer, uh, which is what we did in the in the Mojo Pack video, which is which also featured this iPod. In fact, uh, this still has Mojo Pack on it. That's why we've got start.exe. We've got the Windows folder, program files. Uh, so we can go in here, and you know we got System32, and obviously if you saw the Mojo Pack video, you'll know what this is all about. So yeah, it's very nice to have a file browser and Rockbox gives that to you. Now playing just brings you to whatever song is playing here. So obviously here it is. We can, we'll just pause that here. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can get access to that very, very quickly. You got settings, you got an audio recorder, playlist catalog, plugins, system, and shortcuts. Uh, now let's talk about the theme. So if we go into settings here, now if you recall from earlier in this video, we did install a custom theme uh, that is not applied currently. So you have to go into theme settings here. So we'll go into that. And uh, we, the the select button on this iPod seems to not be super super responsive because I'm having to press it a couple times for it to actually register. But anyways, uh, so you go to base skin here. Actually, it's going to be while playing skin. So you go to while playing skin, and XL Blue is the skin that we chose. So we're going to uh, select that, and uh, it will change the while playing skin. So if we go back to menu here and go to resume playback, there we go. So here is that kind of Windows Vista looking theme. I mean, really. Really, the only thing that really reminded me of Vista was the background. It's kind of got that same look to it. But uh, yeah, this is what the theme looks like. Now, the system-wide theme, if we go under theme settings here and go to uh, base skin, this essentially takes effect system-wide. So uh, we can select XL Blue in here, and this will change the look of the menus and everything. It doesn't change the background or, or anything like that, but it does change the layout of things. So you see now, not only do we have our list over here on the left, but we've got a kind of like now playing thing over here on the right, where it tells you the current song that's playing, it tells you where to add in the duration of the song, and it changes the layout of the status bar. It's not really a bar anymore at all, but you've got your date up there at the top left, your current battery percentage here, and your uh, current time and day over there. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering how you boot back into the original iPod firmware or the original iPod operating system, all you have to do is hold down the play and pause button to shut down the iPod. And once it shuts down, you want to uh, hold down the menu button. And as the iPod is turning on, you want to flick the hold switch. And this will allow the iPod to boot back into the regular firmware that we're all used to. So we can uh, flick the hold switch once again. And here we are. Now to get back into Rockbox, you want to hold down the center button and the menu button at the same time. And this will force the iPod to do a restart. It takes about eight to 10 seconds. Once it shows the Apple logo, you can let go and we'll boot back into the Rockbox firmware. It's super simple to swap between the two operating systems that are now on the iPod. But yeah, there you go. Now, one of the main things that I want to touch on is going to be the plugins here. So so the plugins are essentially the third-party applications and games that you can run on your iPod and Rockbox installs a ton of them by default and you already saw that list of games on the website uh, that it adds to the newest version here but if we go under games take a look at all of these games here we got a ton of them we got 2048 and this is the 2048 that you're thinking of obviously it's not the same exact application it had to be ported to you know be able to be run on the iPod here and it does have a bit of a different layout but overall uh yeah it's it's 2048 and you may be asking yourself okay how do we get out of this right because obviously you're you're using the buttons here to play the game right well you have to press in this case and this is not the same with every game and with every application that's in here but in this case we're going to press the select and menu buttons at the same time and that brings you back to the 2048 menu here and then we can quit and it will save our, our game here so we can resume it later on if we want to. And we're back at the games menu. We'll come back to the games later because we also have, if we go into plugins here, we've got some applications. And most of these in here are utilities. So you've got an alarm clock, you've got a calculator, a calendar, a chess clock, a regular clock, you've got a stopwatch. I mean, all sorts of stuff. There's even rock paint which is an MS Paint-like application, and it kind of has an MS Paint 
kind of UI going on here. I mean, not not exactly, but it kind of reminds me of it personally. And yeah, if you ever wanted to paint on your iPod, well, uh, you can absolutely do that. It is uh, quite uh, quite difficult using you know the scroll wheel to paint, but you can do that. So you see, I'm uh, drawing a line here. We can go up. And if you hit select, that will uh, kind of take your your pencil or whatever off of the canvas. So now we can go down here and get back to our color palette. You got to move the cursor to the bottom of the screen. So we can select a green here. We can change the tool that we're using. Say we want. We can type. Oh, this will be hilarious. Let's try to type on this thing. Okay. So we'll do that, and we'll go up here, and I assume. Okay, set text. Oh yeah, here we go. So we can use the scroll wheel. Go over here. We'll go to M. We'll just spell out. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. We'll just spell out MJD. Okay, so, oh yeah. See, I'm like going to to like press this to like go down, but you have to use the scroll wheel to go down. So we'll press M. Yeah, see, that is one of the things about Rockbox is it's not. I mean, the UI. Uh, or the the controls rather are not consistent across applications so everything is going to be a little bit different and there we go so there is our awesome text right so yeah lots of utilities in the applications folder demos are pretty cool a lot of these act uh, kind of like screen savers so like you got fire here we can launch this and uh yeah, there you go. So it just kind of plays this this animation. Like I said, kind of kind of reminds me of uh, how a screensaver would work. And you can uh, on some of these you can interact with it. I don't, don't think this is one of those. But uh, if we hold down, I think if we hold down the menu button, maybe we press select and menu. Will that get us back? There we go. Okay, so we're back at the demos menu here. Um, Cube. This is one that you can interact with. So we'll launch it here. And it's uh, just going to be a cube floating around. But if you press the select button, or I think it's the menu button. Oh, so the select button changes the speed when you hold it down. So there you go. You can press menu to change the appearance of the cube. You can pause it. Oh, well, that makes sense. Hitting pause and play. Is it going to pause and play the animation? And you can also use the scroll wheel to kind of manually change its position. So we can scroll like way over here, we can scroll back, you can change by like hitting. So if I hit here, now I'm on the Z axis. Now I'm on the X axis, the Y axis. All right, so I think you guys have waited long enough. Let's take a look at Doom running on an iPod. This select button is trash, dude. It is normally not supposed to be this bad. There is something physically wrong with this hardware. But anyways, uh, Rock Doom is the name of this particular port, which is very fitting. It's for Rockbox, Rock Doom, it just makes sense, right? So yeah, here we are at the menu, just like with pretty much every other Rockbox plugin or Rock as they are also called, uh, you get a very basic menu here with a couple of options you can configure. First thing we're gonna do is make sure sound is enabled. You see I've got my audio cable plugged into the headphone jack, so we'll go to options if it wants to register the key press or the button press, and we'll go to sound, and yes, it's on, perfect. So we'll go back. We'll hit menu to go back uh, once again, and let's do it, guys. Let's play the game. So uh, the first thing that you're going to notice is this is not the original Doom. This is Free Doom. Now, Free Doom is, you can probably guess by the name, a free version of Doom. It is based on the Doom engine, but it is not the same exact game. Uh, but it is completely free to download. Now, let me just give you a little bit of a backstory. Back in 1997, id Software open-sourced the Doom engine, also known as id Tech 1, which allowed anybody to take the engine and use it to make other games, just as long as they were not doing it for commercial purposes. Eventually, though, id Software released the engine under the GNU General Public License. One of the largest things that this did was allow people to use the engine for commercial purposes. Now, id Tech 1 itself is a very significant piece of gaming history. There were many games throughout the 90s based on this engine. Obviously, the Doom line of games was, but you've also got Heretic and Hexen, both developed by Raven Software and published by id Software. You've got Strife, and most interestingly, you have Chex Quest, which essentially is a modified, kid-friendly version of Doom that was bundled with Chex cereal. It was included in the box, and yeah, I'm not kidding you. It's probably one of the most interesting games ever to be based on the id Tech 1 engine. But all of these games were released prior to id Software open-sourcing the code, meaning that these companies had to 
individually come to a licensing agreement with id themselves but once they open source the code this was no longer necessary and now anybody could take the code and make a game with it and that is exactly how free doom came into existence and uh you can see it is it's hilarious trying to play this game on an ipod i mean it's so like, I just died here because, uh, I mean, it's just, these controls are hilarious to you. So, I think if we hit menu here, it'll it'll respawn us. So, okay. So, yeah, you use menu to move forward. You use uh, previous to move to the left, next to move to the right, and uh, play and pause to shoot, and the select button to change weapons. So, that's what I, uh, that's how I, I switch to my fists here. So, we're going to switch back to the gun so we can actually uh, stay alive here. Though, you can also use... <laughs> the scroll wheel to move. You can use the scroll wheel to move around in the game. I mean, it's it's just like it's so hilarious, dude. This just cracks me up. But this is not where it ends at all because if we exit out of this here, which in this case you have to do once you're in the game, uh, you cannot press menu and select. That'll just move you forward and constantly change weapons. So you have to actually use the hold switch up here to uh, bring up the menu. So we'll do that. We'll go down to quit game and we'll press select to quit out of it. Uh, with the way that Rock Doom works, you can actually copy a Doom WAD file. For example, the WAD file for the shareware version of Doom. You can copy that over to your iPod, go to the game menu here, and change it to Doom Shareware. And now, when we play the game, this is going to be the shareware version of Doom. Yeah, can you believe that? I think I've got a uh, challenge for somebody. Let's see if somebody can beat the entirety of Doom 1 on an iPod using the click wheel to to control uh doom guy i mean this is just this is hilarious dude like this is again it, it's just one of those things there is absolutely no reason to do this other than just the sheer enjoyment and the fact that like yeah i can say now that i have i have successfully uh played doom on my ipod classic i'm probably gonna die like pretty soon here though because yep there we go that didn't take long at all but uh oh my gosh guys there you have it guys that that is Doom 1 uh, on, on the iPod Classic here. And that's really going to wrap it up for today's video. Uh, that is a, a quick look. A quick look. This video is going to be kind of long. But uh, that is a look at Rockbox and uh, some of the things that it has to offer. It is a really, really cool uh, third-party firmware. And if you have an old iPod lying around, I'd highly recommend checking it out. It's free and you can do so much with it. But uh, there you have it, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.